All right, welcome everyone, Chris Petri here. Thanks so much for coming by, painting and oils. We're gonna be having a really fun time. We're gonna do this uh, beautiful kind of country scene. We're gonna have like this beautiful red barn here. That's like the kind of the main uh, focal point of the uh, painting, that big red barn. And then we have a red house here on the side and then there's some other um, structures here too we have. We have beautiful green grasses. We have some trees, some branches, some twigs. We have a beautiful sky wash we put in. Trees in the distance behind the backdrop of the painting. Beautiful colors. We're gonna show you all the different uh, color mixes you're gonna to need to do. We're gonna have it all here on this painting, on this video. We're gonna be working from this photograph, which will be on camera the whole time over here on the right-hand side as we paint. Um, I'll zoom in just a little more so you can kind of see the beautiful uh, details of things. So. And kind of see how we've got a really nice feel for color warmth heat it's a summer day warm colors mixed with our whites cool colors from the sky also touching onto the rooftops and some of the facades of these wonderful structures we have here this is just a wonderful painting to do and you can do this painting it's absolutely achievable for anyone just starting out in oil painting um, you can kind of see here this is the entire I have waxed paper that's my palette I use by Strathmore. It's a waxed paper. You can mix all your colors right on that. I have it in the comments section below. All my art supplies, I have everything there that you would need. It's very simple. You just check out the links below. You'll see all the supplies we need. But these are all the colors right here. We started out with our whole color wheel of colors, and then we just mixed down everything to the colors that we needed here for this painting. We kept all the same colors the whole way through, so we're not having any problems with uh, kind of like colors that are disjointed from the color scheme that we're using. So you'll learn all these things in this painting and more on this video. And again, thanks so much. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And please subscribe if you have a chance. Just click that button below so you don't miss anything and you don't lose track of me. I want you to stick here and paint oils with me. We're painting each week, week after week, month after month, and year after year. So please have fun, enjoy the process with me, and we're going to uh, have a lot of great times here on my channel with oil painting and if you're interested in watercolor painting as well I have an oil a watercolor painting channel so you want to check that out too if you think you might want to work in watercolors along with oils sometimes really a really a positive benefit to work in two different mediums like oils and watercolors they just are like the best if you can work both of those at the same time it's going to help a lot with your skills uh, in painting as an artist but in any case don't stress have fun, and we'll see you in a second with the rest of the video. Okay, welcome everyone. Chris Petri here. Thanks so much for stopping by here. We're going to do some beautiful oil paintings on this channel. So we're just kind of starting out here. Um, we have a few other videos here on my channel that we've already uh, created. I'm hoping you'll go back and peruse through my uh, few videos that we do have already up and running on the channel. And you'll see stuff similar uh, to this here. Some beautiful work with the color wheel just to get you familiar with uh, the, the primary colors and secondaries and tertiary colors. Just so you kind of see that you have lots of options with your colors by just mixing a few of the primaries. If you mix out, if, if you just put onto your, pal on, onto your palette red, yellow, and blue, you can make all these other colors from red, yellow, and blue basically. So all colors are derived from red, yellow, and blue, basically. So if you put out red, yellow, blue, you can mix your beautiful greens from your yellow and your blue. You can create some wonderful violets from your red and your blue. You can take your red and yellow and make a wonderful orange, and then you can start mixing out from there, and then getting some of your more grayish um, colors from your um, mixing your your secondary colors together. So when you mix uh, let's say let's this is a really one of one of my favorites is taking the green and the blue and making a blue green. Look how beautiful the blue green looks. It's like a nice grayish color with some cooler grays in there and some warm grays are great too. So yellow and green create some warm grays. So you have just so much options with your color. So these are some of the other videos we did and uh, some work with uh, just some color swatches I think we have on there 
as well as we as well as we talk about priming your canvas so in this painting we won't prime our canvas we'll just start out with our hardboard and we'll work right with the white of the this canvas here on our hardboard but you can certainly when you want to add some brown burnt umber and French ultramarine blue and make different variations lighter and darker tones on your paper maybe like a half a tone between white and black this would be your half halfway point between white and black and you'll see how that's a beautiful warm and it kind of matches the tonal value of a your standard just some plain old cardboard from cardboard boxes you'll see how that's similar if you squint your eyes and you'll see that it's similar in tone not exact but, but close and of course we did a of course we did a beautiful Venice scene in Italy with the water and a man in a boat and the beautiful distant shoreline sunrise the feeling of sunrise the warm sky the beautiful sparkling of water um, here so you'll, you'll see that we're going to create a lot of beautiful paintings and compositions here as we go and now we're just going to shift into something a little different more of a beautiful countryside type of feeling like maybe a farm farmhouse or maybe just a couple beautiful homes and um, things like that along the um, countryside maybe there's an ocean behind the trees maybe this is near the coast you kind of make it up as you go in your mind you just have fun enjoy the the ideas of what you're creating your paintings so the first thing we do is we just get real basic with this here I have um, all of my materials and supplies are down below in the comments section I hope you just won't think that I'm gonna show you all these things and I don't have it down below so down below in the comments section sometimes you have to click on the word more and it shows you all of the links but I have links to Amazon for all these art supplies so brushes paints our um, wax paper which is the um, for our palette and then our hardboard canvases here so all this and more is down below if you need to check that out um, to start working on gathering some supplies for yourself but we're just having a fun time doing oils no pressure um, we don't want to get involved with too much detail I always mention that if you're kind of just starting out with like another medium so let's say you're coming from my watercolor channel and you are going to try out some oils you just go real simple in the beginning your main focus is just having fun enjoying it having the experience start out being really enjoyable and fun and then as you go maybe six months to a year if you're still interested and you're working with the oils then then you get into more minutia and more details and then you might figure out oh you know what i want some extra brushes uh, i might want to add some extra colors you know things like that or, you know you or you might be doing some more research whatever it is but in the beginning just have fun with it just get some basic things going so that you don't get overwhelmed with trying to research too much and get the um i guess they call it the analysis paralysis um type of thing going where um it becomes overwhelming because we're looking into things too much and trying to um you know get into all of the finer details of things when we just really in the beginning we just want to stay really basic real simple real having like a lot of fun and that's really a good way to go so I'm going to look at the painting and say, well, how are we going to create these colors? Um, we can take any of our colors that we have here with the Artisan, Windsor Newton Artisan colors. These are water mixable oil colors, so there's no, I'm just using water like we would with um, watercolor painting and the paint, and that's it. And we won't use a lot of water, just a little tiny bit to rinse our brush off and maybe thin down the paint just a tiny bit in the beginning when we're first starting on the canvas. So we'll, let's just, um, I usually go um, with my paints. I usually use like on one side of the palette for watercolors. I'll always have my, maybe my warm colors on the left and my cool colors on the right. So I kind of stick with that same idea. So maybe I'll just kind of start out here and put out some. cadmium red loser and crimson like that and at any given time you can always come back and add more paint to your 
your wax paper palette here that we're using. And this is uh, the Strathmore um, palette paper, which is like a wax paper. And it's really great when you're done painting. You can scrape off your paint. What I usually do to save my paint, if it's, you know, if there's a good chunk of paint left on my wax paper, what I do is I take a palette, a palette knife like this, and then I take a small vitamin container and I take that and open it up and I grab the red and put the leftover red in a palette in a uh, vitamin container like this and this way I don't waste my paint so if you're done painting and you have a little leftover enough that you think you want to save it you just put it into a um, vitamin container like that and put that along the side on your art setup that you have you maybe you have a little small section you have for yourself in your house where you have your setup for your art your little studio setup you might have or maybe you just have a plastic bin a big plastic bin and you put all your art supplies in there and then when you're ready to paint and draw and do some artwork and practice and you can grab your bin and then open it up and take all your stuff out put it on a table work at your table whatever type of setup you have and then you can when you're done you can pack it all up into the um, bin and then you get started again the next time so it's uh, kind of a fun way to keep things organized so you know what I might do a lot of this here just I'll probably put out most of these colors here so I'll put out my warm colors first on the left so we have like the lemon yellow cadmium yellow cadmium red Blizzard and Crimson. And then we'll go into the cooler colors. We might even, let's put in some yellow ochre too. Like that. So we're just going to get plenty of colors out here on our palette. And then we start going to our cooler colors. And then I'll just put some cerulean blue. Cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, and some burnt umber. I use burnt umber a lot. Makes some great darks. I'll put that here. I should have really put it over, over here on the left, but that's okay. We'll put it there. And then, what else? we're going to use some white. This is titanium white. I'll put quite a bit of that out there. We'll use that to, we're going to use a lot of white actually. You can see in this scene there's quite a bit of white there. So we can use white, we can use this. Actually when we're painting with um, oils, we tend to cover over the whole canvas with paint, so we need white instead of leaving white canvas. Although you can leave some of your white canvas show through at times, but most times we're, we're pretty much the rule is you're always going to cover your whole canvas with paint. So we have all our warm colors, our cool colors here, white, and that's how you. See. And then we also let's use our phthalo green. So, but again, you can kind of see, I keep my warm colors over here, and then we transition over into the cooler colors over here. And I'll set this aside now, and then we're just going to have a, let's take our brush here. Let, before we get our brushes and our paints going, let's just do a quick sketch of this scene. Very, very loosely, not getting too um, bogged down with details, but just enough to get a little bit of some structure onto the canvas here. So the first thing I do, I notice that... This rooftop here is pretty much looks like we could use like a something like this, like a post-it to get the roof angles. And that looks pretty close. You can kind of see like that. So let's do that. Let's get our roof angle and we'll put the roof peak just above the top of the canvas. So the, the point of the roof, the peak, the ridge of the roof is going to be up above the top of our canvas just so we have 
um, that kind of situated correctly according to this picture I printed off online so I always go online Google online I search for all kinds of things like uh, oil painting country style oil paintings this and that I do word searches and I find different paintings and then I just print them out so that's what I did here just got a picture so I'll use this charcoal black charcoal generals uh, charcoal or like sticks you can get I think these are in the description you know down below you can find these too so just to get my one main roof angle there I think that really looks good and that's gonna be fine and then we can just sort of you could take a ruler at this point if you have a ruler and you can just drop a straight line down this way and if you're ever a little bit tentative about getting plumb lines or straight lines you can always buy a t-square I think I have my T-square somewhere over here. Here it is. So you can see this T-square here. You could take that and you could rest it on the top of your canvas, the square edge of your canvas, and then just hold it tight against that. And that gives you a perfect plumb line like this. So you do that. So already we have a gorgeous, beautiful start to this. You can see how that's really fantastic. That's the real powerful vertical and then the 45 degree angle going up to the ridge of the roof. And the same thing, we got that angle correct by just using a simple bit of any kind of paper that has the right angle on it, like that. You could use anything really. And then once we have that, I think the next thing we can do is just sort of start to work down this way and say all right let's look at this roof here just a little bit below this here you could change things around a little bit it doesn't have to be perfect but I'm gonna kinda do this get this roof here the ridge of this roof here and then just make a little bit of a swale like that and come over this way and then this way And then over here, we're going to have another roof. It's even lower. It's actually just about this rooftop here. This building, this part of the house, this might be a garage. Or this, actually, this looks like, it looks like part of the, the home over here on the left. Uh, you can see that this roof line is even with the um, bottom of the roof here. The top of the ridge of this roof is the even with the bottom of this. Um, bottom of this roof or the, the fascia board and uh, eaves of the roof. So if we go here, we just kind of go over here a little bit. And that's the top of this roof there. And then you can go down another bit here. And again, these are approximates. Don't get too worried about everything being perfect. Just we're going to use what we have here to sort of get the different angles and things and, and levels. Um, lines that we need to kind of go around things so we start up here we work our way this way we have a chimney up here let's put that in we'll just put a rectangle here basically a rectangle then over here we have another rooftop here so we're going to go up here with this rooftop like that and come down this way this and this goes here straight on down again if you want to you can use your t-square hold that to your top of your board and you can get your plumb line going straight down this way and then here we'll take this uh, roof here to get the wall underneath this roof we're going to go in a little bit so you can kind of see I'm going to move my wall in a little bit further in from the edge of the roof here like that same with over here the roof extends beyond the wall like that same here and we have this here and I just have to be careful I almost rested my uh, 
T-square ruler into my paint. That's the only thing with oil painting. I think it's a little more, sometimes we can get a little more messy with things. So I'm just going to try to be aware to be very careful with that. And uh, we'll keep going here. So we have the, let's just get our charcoal drawing in here as best we can. And I think you can kind of see that we're just taking the, the approach of start in one area, the largest area, maybe the largest uh, subject matter that you have shape that you have in your picture, which would be this here, the large red barn. And then from there we work down this way to the left over here. And then now we can start working these last few buildings over here. So we pretty much have this all completed. And then maybe over here we'll start with this and we'll realize that this small area over here, which kind of looks like a, a bit of a um, shed roof and a feature over here, like a bump out from the um, barn. So that would be a little bit lower than this and a little bit in from here. And I might take my ruler like this and just give myself the opportunity to use my half size ruler here just to get a straight line there. And then that looks like a shed roof there on the top of that. Then we have this other house here. This looks like a house. We might put a window in there if we want to, but that's pretty much Um, quite a bit to the to the left of this peak of the roof here, this ridge. So we're looking pretty good if we go about here, like that. That goes up above a little bit here, and then we have another roof here. But we notice that this roof steeper pitch, and then this roof is a softer pitch like this, a, a, you know, less steep. So we'll go with this roof like so. And we're going to make this a softer pitch like this. And we'll just go like this. And we notice that it goes about there. And then it goes about the same this way. And then sometimes you just kind of work this other angle out so that it's kind of the same going here and here. And another way you can kind of get that angle if you need to is if you take your paper like this. If you're working from a something like this, you would go, come up here like this. And then you can fold your paper over or even make a line on it. So this is something you can do. That'll help you get some more angles if you need to. So you can come over here and look at this and say, okay, it's about like this and you can take this and just fold it over and then come up here and then you can take get your angle that way and then just like that so sometimes if angles are a little challenging you know if you're drawing all the time and drawing a lot of architecture like houses and things like that you might have an easier time just doing it by feel but if you need to use some things like this by just doing a little bit of creative tracing, things like that, you'll get it. That's not a problem. And then over here we have another bit of a feature here. Looks like another, looks like a dormer over here possibly. So we'll take that other roof line like that, like this, and that goes over here. like that and I think that looks good I think we have all of our roof um, angles correct and close to what we're looking at here and now that we have our charcoal charcoal on our paper and again you can prime your paper first if you want to with like a you know like a, a yellow ochre color or I use blue most of the time I use blue French ultramarine blue which is this here, French ultramarine blue and um, uh, burnt umber with a little bit of white. And then I make it either a little more toward the blue or a little more toward the uh, warm earth color, brown, with a little bit of white and, and to prime the canvases. But if you don't want to, we can, and I like to work with the white canvas too. So I use both uh, methods, but this is pretty much looking fine. We have trees over here. And um, I think we're all set. We're pretty much ready to 
ready to paint. All right, so let's take a quick break. It's always good after you've done some drawing and you've concentrated a lot and you've worked out your angles and we've kind of spent about 20 minutes here already creating our charcoal drawing. That's a perfect time to take a break. Um, stretch a little bit, relax. If you stand up while you're working, then you might sit down and relax for five, 10 minutes. Or if you're sitting, you can stand up and stretch a little bit, whatever it is, you know, you're the artist, you're gonna figure out what you wanna do while you're gonna take your break, but it is good. Take five, 10 minutes, just kind of get your concentration level relaxed. And then when you come back, you'll, you'll feel more um, uh, ready to start doing the painting portion and start re, uh, focusing on what we're doing here. All right, let's uh, come back in a second. All right, so we're going to get uh, started with our painting. And I think the first place I'll start is the red barn here. Um, that seems to be the well, that's the place we started our drawing, and I think that's the prominent uh, dark in the painting. Kind of seems like the real prominent part of the whole composition. So I'm going to grab some cadmium red, some alizarin crimson. I have a little bit of the uh, a little bit of water in my brush, just a damp brush. And then I'll just maybe get some paint on here. Maybe a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple. So I'll just start to mix in a little, a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue for some purple in there. Maybe a little, um, cerulean, a little bit of green. Maybe I'll make it a little bit darker than what we're seeing in the picture. It's pretty, pretty dark in the picture there. I'll paint around these roofs here, these white roofs. I'll try to get the uh, dark red. And let's have fun with our oil paints. Let's not agonize over anything or worry about things too much. I'll pick up some more of that cadmium red. So really a basically cadmium red and alizarin crimson, but we did add in a few little extra bits of color just to give ourselves a little bit of variation. I just carefully keep a watch on where I had my pencil pencil drawing so that we had that little shed roof over here on the side here. And you can see too, we're doing a thin layer on this, this wall, you know, this, as we're painting here, we're doing a thin layer for our first our first bit of starting up the painting. We're going to go with thinner, thinner layers. A bit of red in here. Just so we have a little color there. We're going to mix around the colors over here. We'd notice we have a decent amount of red over here. And we'll go darker over here eventually. I'm looking at the picture here and I'm painting here on this printout. So if I go with red over here, I'm okay. We will go darker though. We'll make some shadows. And you can kind of see too, my brush is a um, filbert brush. And this is a hog hair brush. Natural hairs. Um, A 
<clears throat> dark under there. We're going to go with darker tones, tonal values under here. But I'll just put a little bit of red there to just to sort of get the feel for things, what we're doing here. Some trees here. So maybe I'll just put a little bit of red here, get things started. Okay, that looks good. Let's uh, take a break now. We're going to let this kind of dry a little bit. We're hoping that we can go over with a couple, or at least one more bit of color on top of this. So if we let this dry a little bit, maybe half an hour to an hour, um, it should just be a little bit more tacky and dry. And then if we do decide to go over with some more thicker paint brush strokes, we, we should be fine. I think we could even go over it now and it probably wouldn't be a big deal, but when we're layering with oil painting we sort of, it's probably to our benefit if we let it set up a little bit and maybe dry just a little bit for maybe like a half an hour to an hour and then we can come back. Um, maybe I'll even try a little bit of a blow dryer to see if that might work, just to get this a little bit drier than what it is now and I think that's good. All right, so let's take a quick break. The uh, next thing we'll do is, you know what, even let's let's keep working here because I think what we can do is I'll rinse my brush off, dry off a little bit of the water. Maybe we can start getting in some of our greens. So I'm going to take some of that yellow ochre. Um, some of the um, phalo green. Some of the cadmium lemon yellow. A little bit of the brown, burnt umber. So as we mix our greens, we kind of can't go wrong with using blue, cerulean blue, mixed with the uh, yellow ochre. And then uh, for the cooler greens, maybe in the shadows, and then some of the cadmium lemon yellow that's for the more um, maybe the greens that are in light more in the sunny areas where there's some more sunlight and um, again the phthalo green could be the in the darker areas maybe a little bit of blue a little bit of French ultramarine blue for the shadowy areas for the greens and a little bit of burnt umber too to kind of just give things a little bit of a more earth, earthy type feel for the greens so I think that should be good. If we mix up these little bits of color for our and this is again more thin. This is a thin kind of paint here. We're not going too thick at this point. course we can uh, once we maybe a little more bluish green for here this might be a little cooler over here and you can always remember you can add lights over your darks when you're creating your trees or anything really in in oil paint you have the more of the idea of darks going in first and then your lights you'll finish up with your lights so I'll just do some bits over here. Let's 
so we'll get more in depth with the uh, with the trees and the tree shapes and the And I kind of just do my brushwork kind of upwards just to keep my mind thinking that the, the tree shapes are kind of going upwards toward the light. They're growing upwards like this. Okay, looking good, and then we can, I'll add just a touch of water here. And I'm thinking this might be a little bit more, we'll just block in some of this uh, color here. And we're going to go over it with some lighter, more like maybe some more cadmium lemon yellow. Um, some mixing in some of the white to um, get some more of lighter values. But for right now, this looks pretty good. Okay, so now you're seeing the kind of the game plan of what we're doing here. We're just blocking in some of the main the greens all through here in the background behind the uh, in the in the middle distance to the far further distance the um, the trees behind the barn and the houses here these farmhouses so once we block those in we can get into more details we can make some more lighter um, colors some thicker paint on top but as long as we get the the basic concept of where we want everything blocked in we're fine and then you'll see that this is very light so here all these areas are pretty light so we'll be going over that with lighter colors we'll be mixing white into some of our other colors using repeating colors as well so probably all the colors that we're using now we're just going to keep using the same colors throughout the whole painting that's one of the things with um, oil painting kind of works the same with any uh, medium whether it's watercolor acrylics um, pastels in your artwork you're just going to want to sort of have the repeating colors happening to keep your painting looking very harmonious and pleasant looking we wouldn't uh, create all of these colors and then all of a sudden we're just going to go in with a lot of the let's say the cadmium yellow this is the cadmium lemon yellow we're going to use quite a bit of that and yes we might use a tiny touch of this cad yellow here cadmium yellow However, we're going to, again, we're sticking with these colors that we started with, and that's what we're just going to work the whole painting through with these colors, and we're not going to get any kind of more um, paints from our paint set out. We're just going to leave the original colors we had that you saw in the beginning, and these are all the colors we're just going to continually use, and we'll even work in and pick up some of these colors right out of this area here to mix in with our white paint. We'll mix some reds in here too, so we'll have some different interesting colors that we're going to mix um, on top of this. But let's take a quick break. Let this set up a little bit. And then I think we'll be ready to go over with another layer of paint. That'll be our thicker paint. Maybe we'll use our palette knife a little bit. We'll see if we can work our palette knife into this uh, composition. It's always good to get a little bit of a um, 
practice in with our palette knife. These palette knives are wonderful. You can get some really good, beautiful, very sharp edges here and there, for especially for this architecture. We're going to maybe want to add a couple really nice sharp lines to um, some of these softer lines that we have in the, in the painting. So we'll remember to use our palette knife a little bit here and there. We'll see how that works going forward. But I think uh, right now I think everything seems to be blending nicely and coming together the way we want it to. And again, we're having fun with these oils. Oil painting is fun. We're not looking to um, stress over anything or worry about if it's a painting that we're going to put in a gallery or that it's going to sell for, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. We're not kind of worried about that. We're just worried about let's have fun with this, enjoy it, enjoy the whole process of getting the drawing in and then getting our colors out and then mixing the paints and just using the process of just carefully looking at our reference photo that we have here and just working from that reference photo and try to keep refining the painting as we go so that it winds up looking very close and we have accomplished our tonal values, our darks and our lights, as well as our colors that we're looking to um, have um, in this painting. And then as well, some of the finer details toward the end, we're going to want to make sure we have a bit of some weeds and grasses and things like that, a couple of branches and some twigs and maybe a small tree and maybe a little more some more details too to these trees in the background and uh, we'll put in a bit of blue sky too um, very very soon all right so we'll be right back again I'm just going to take a quick break see if this can set up for a little while and we'll be right back all right so we just came back from a break I took about an hour break and uh, I noticed that w there's some really nice uh, tackiness and drying to the um, paint now so that thin layer that we just put on, uh, you just noticed we, we created those really thin bits of um, oil painting uh, glazing for our first um, bit of color going across our painting here. Blocking in colors, our reds and our greens for our trees and bushes and grasses and things like that and our barn. And we have a lot of whites here you can see. We're working from this photograph right here. And there's nothing better than working from a photograph. Or if you're out in real life and you're painting a scene like this, it would be no different. You're just going to be constantly looking back and forth at your painting and to your scene that you're painting. Or it might be uh, your TV. Maybe you have something on your TV you want to paint from or your iPhone or your iPad. Whatever it is, you'll figure it out as you go. But you just keep referencing that and putting onto your... Um, canvas what you're seeing in front of you here and we just notice with oils we're going to put the darks in first and block those darks in first and then we'll work our lighter um, paint over the top of those darks and again we work the same way um, well with oils just you can always remember the rule of thumb is you're going thinner first you're putting on thin layers of paint first and then as you're working toward the finishing of your painting you're going on with thicker paint so we'll kind of show you how you can also use a little bit of your palette knife here, as well as brushes. And we're going to also introduce a few other brushes, maybe a round brush. I'm using hog hair brushes. Incidentally, all my oil art supplies are below in the comment section of this video. In case you want to start browsing around, those are a few links you can start out with Amazon. I buy all my art supplies on Amazon, or 90% of my art supplies. They have everything I ever need, usually. Um, so I use Amazon and they, it gets delivered, you know, within a couple days, it's at my house and I'm happy as a lark. And uh, also too, um, I want to say, hey, please subscribe. If, you, if you're not subscribed, I don't want you to lose me. Usually when you subscribe, all it does is it just lets YouTube know that they're going to send you my next video when I make another video in a week from now or a couple days from now. They'll send you that video and you won't have to worry about coming back out into the YouTube world and trying to find me, maybe forgot my name or whatever it is. So don't worry about it. If you just click subscribe on the right-hand side below and you click the um, all notifications, there's usually a bell. There's usually bells that show up. When you click subscribe, there's like three bells. You click the top bell. That top bell means that you'll receive all the notifications each time we're creating a new um, tutorial here on, on YouTube. So I'm really excited. Glad you're here. I'm really happy that you're um, joining along with me. We're doing oil painting. 
Um, again, I'm uh, predominantly a watercolor artist, but I have been painting for a few years now in oils, and I'm planning on doing a lot more videos here on YouTube going forward. So you're going to see continual content coming uh, onto YouTube from me on this channel for oil painting. And then also, too, if you happen to be an oil painter and you want to learn about watercolors, well, certainly um, you can just look at uh, my other channels on YouTube. You just type in Chris Petrie watercolors and you'll find me over there, too. There's other channels I have with watercolor. All right, so um, let's get started here with our next bit of uh, paint application as we go. So what I'll do is, I think I'm going to start working some of the um, the lighter color now. So what I'll do is I'll, and I'm, right away I'm going to notice that I need more white paint. So don't be afraid to squeeze out your paint. This is titanium white, and again I'm using Winsor Newton Artisan Water Mixable Oil Colors. Now what's great about this is you don't need paint thinner and flammable type solvents. This is a very safe way to paint oils. You just need a little bit of water. Pretty much it's like working in watercolors in a sense where you just need your water to rinse your brush and you use a little bit of water when you're mixing your first application of your first coats of paint as you're going, your oil paint. And then as you're going on into the painting, you're going to use less water probably. You're just going to be using mostly straight paint. But I just want to mention that because that's an important part of my channel and what I'm doing here is I don't want toxic fumes in my studio and I don't think you want them in your studio either. So inflammable paint thinners and things like this. Let's stay away from that. Let's use water mixable oil paints and this these are happens this is Winsor Newton. I swear by Winsor Newton. I don't get paid anything from Winsor Newton. I'm just saying I I'm a, again I've been painting watercolors for like 20 years and I've been using Winsor Newton for a long time and their paints are great and they're excellent too for these oils I think these are phenomenal and again they're water mixable so you don't need any solvents at all paint thinners or anything like that so I just wanted to put out some more white here because I know we're going to need quite a bit as you can see we have quite a bit of area in this painting where we're going to need white. So let's just start right over here. I just want to get that white going here. And you can see I did add a little bit of the red. So I have a little bit of red, a little bit of that, a um, little bit of the blue. So we're going to have a little bit of the blue color there. And I think a little bit of cerulean for the sky color. So if you can just make your white paint that you're going to create right now, and then you might even take a round brush like this with a finer point. You can see how working with this filbert brush, you can kind of see how it's quite a bit larger. Now if we get this smaller round brush, um, into the mix now as we're working. You'll notice you'll get a little better control of finer points of, you know, finer lines. So now I will get a little bit of a finer line here. And then as you work, use your thicker paint so that you're not going to see the underpainting too much. We want to avoid having too much of the underpainting showing. Okay. So that looks really good. We have that completed. Let's come over here and let's... Now, as we work from the left to the right, I tend to be, you know, always conscious of working from left to right because I'm right-handed so you know I can rest my hand on the parts of the canvas that are dry so that I have more control of my brush so if you can kind of think about it that way if you're left-handed you'd want to go work um, right to left like this and 
a lot of this is dry and tacky now, so you can actually rest your your hand and your finger actually on the painting as you're going from right to left if you're painting left-handed. Again, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be thinking, okay, I'm going to work this way. Sometimes, too, if you have to. There's um, other ways you can work where you can use, like, um, I've somewhere in my studio I have a, a, a curtain rod. I use a curtain rod to rest on my table, and I rest my hand on the curtain rod. I don't have it right now. I don't see it. I'll have to find it maybe the next break. But you can also use things like... Um, you can use another paintbrush. So I have a paintbrush like this. I can rest this paintbrush on the on my on my table like this, and then rest my hand on top of that so that I'm not leaning in an area that might be wet. So if you have to go in and you have wet paint, you can always rest something like a paintbrush or a curtain rod, whatever you can find, and then you can do that. You can do some finer work where you don't have to rest your hand on your paint that is, is still wet. So let's keep working now. Um, let's work into our next section here. What I think I will do though is I'm going to rinse off my brush now, my small round brush, and I'll grab some of these darks here. I want to start working in some of these darks maybe. So I'll grab some blue and some brown. So I think ultra, French ultramarine blue and brown. And then what I like to do is I use paper towels and then I want to like dry off my, take some paint off my brush like this and then I can come over here and get a little bit of red. Like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer back to my, I'm going to refer right back to this here. I'm going to start blocking in these darks. Can you see that? I definitely want to start getting those darks in at this point. And uh, this, this is really fun when you really start getting into the uh, darks and lights of things. Like you're going to see a lot of really strong tonal value changes, like really bright whites over here and then really dark darks. That's sort of like our focal area, really. This is sort of like, or a very, very high impact area where we're really gonna, our eyes gonna go right over here, right away when we look into the painting, and then, and then from here maybe we're gonna have our, you know, our our uh, our eyes will kind of start to meander over this way, into the painting, and they'll probably keep coming back to over here. That's the more focal area that I think is the most has the most darks and lights, which seem to be the more of an area that your eye is going to really go to right away. It looks really good. It's kind of like a spotlight. So if you're thinking of like theater or uh, concerts, things like that, spotlight, that's where you're going to be looking mostly if you're out in the, if you're out in the arena or in the concert hall and you see the spotlight, you're going to look there because it's very bright and whoever's in the spotlight is going to be very, uh, noticeable and it'll look more interesting with that really bright light. The colors of the clothing or the instruments they're playing or whatever. So kind of like the same concept. All right, so we got our darks in there. We blocked those darks in right there. And um, we're going to also pick up some cerulean blue over here. Blend that in there. And then we're going to want to get some of that Cerulean blue over here, and then if you go too dark, no problem. You just rinse off your brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and then we're just going to blend that and. And that makes a nice bluish gray that will be interesting to look at there. Okay, then we're going to have a window over here too. Maybe that green. So that's going to be some green, some blue. 
I'm gonna try to see what a little bit of red even too I see so this might be a window here like that then maybe another little dark over there but I think that's pretty good right now so we have this area blocked in we're gonna need some more white in here um, let's uh, Lock in some of this white. So we'll keep working on this section here. We'll take a break soon. It's always good to take a break once in a while just to refresh and relax for a few and then so we'll take some of that. And notice this is thicker now. I'm going on with thicker paint. Okay, then we blend in a little bit here. And then we can get more precise as we go. We'll make the bottom, maybe this is a window here. We'll make that window the bottom there. And this is darker darks. So I want to blend that in there. That's sort of a shadow going across there. Like that. And then let's just keep working here. Let's make some... Wow, look how good that looks. Straight cadmium red. Right here. And that gives us that look of really bright sunlight. Right there. You can pick up a little more straight. Cadmium red. Okay, and we can even go with some of that darker. Good there. And I don't worry about this over here. This is tape. I'm going to lift off this tape. So I did tape around the entire canvas. So once we get completed with the painting, we'll lift off the tape and you see how much better it's going to look. But you don't want to be trying to paint up to a line like if you're gonna for oil painting it's just better to put a, a bit of tape around your canvas it's up to you personally but I, I think it does work nice if you put some tape on there I will add a little bit of that red in here just to kind of mingle those colors a little bit All right, 
now let's come over here this section here more white maybe we'll make this a cooler bit of white over here maybe we'll take our paper towel just take off some of that paint off the brush and pick up a little bit of that blue And then we'll mix in a little bit of blue with this over here. Maybe this is kind of a cooler blue over here. Cooler white, I should say, with a little bit of that blue in there. And again, now I'm going with thick paint. And we remember we will go over with another glazing of paint with our, you know, the plants weeds, grasses, bits of trees, things like this. We're going to go over that area here at the bottom of the painting. So right now I just want to get this in, this wall in. Like that. And maybe I'll add just a touch of uh, maybe cadmium yellow there. A little bit of warmth there. And then a touch more of the warmth up on top, on the roof area. So I'll take a little bit of that cadmium orange. Predominantly white, but yes, we have some of that cadmium orange in there. And that's going to feel like that roof it's probably a metal roof that we have up here. It's looking a little more warmer because the sun is directly shining upon it. And looks good. And we're going to come back and put a shadow underneath this in a little while, but we're going to keep working our colors over here. What I'll do here is we're going to mix up a little bit of white with uh, yellow and red. So we're going to take this here, maybe we'll come down here a little bit. So we're going to have a little more white over here. And we'll take some lemon yellow and some cadmium yellow and a little bit of red. A little more cadmium yellow. So you try to get your color mixed the way you want it. A little bit more lemony yellow there too. So now you can kind of see I've mixed quite a bit of white and then I just added a touch of a little cad red, a little bit of cadmium yellow, a little bit of cadmium uh, yellow lemon to get kind of that lemony yellow color here. And always remember with oils you have an opportunity to come back in a little while and adjust some of your lines, make some sharper lines if you need to. Um, you'll need to maybe brush up a couple details. Not a problem when you're working with oils. You'll have all the opportunity you need. As much time as you need you'll, you'll have that with oils. Okay, so I'm kind of getting this in here. I'm noticing maybe there's a little more red, so I need to pick up a little more red. Like that. Maybe even a little more red here. With a little bit of brown mixed in there. A little bit of brown. Just to gray down that red a little bit. And like that. And then there's going to be some darker color under there for that roof. But we'll we'll come back to that. And then there's no reason why we can't rinse off our brush. 
take our brush and then take a paper towel and take off some of that paint. And I'll start with a new paper towel in just a second. So I'm just going to, I take paper towels and I just have them in my hand, keep them in my hand so we can take paint off the brush. And I just noticed that there's a little bit of a darker red under there. A little bit of brown. More brown, a little more blue, a little bit of French ultramarine blue and burnt umber to make a good dark for our shadow under here. So we can get that shadow under there now. Like that. Like that. You can even go darker yet. And that's where you can also take a palette knife like this. Get yourself a little bit of paint on the back of the palette knife, a little roll of paint, and you can just sort of set that up like that and do a little quick dark there if you want to. Maybe add a little bit of red to it, like that. And then pull some of that color down in here. Okay, so we're mixing a lot of interesting colors here, but let's not worry about that too much now. We've got that area completed. Let's keep moving along here. So now I'm just taking some of this white, just blending it out a little bit, mixing it out, thinning it out just a, t just a little bit. Like Actually, all I did was I, I took my round brush here. So I took my round brush with damp water in there from rinsing it off and then I just went in and mixed my white a little bit to get it thinned out just a tiny bit that's all and then now I'm going to come right in over here and I'm going to block this in and you can block this in with this brush or you could even go back to this brush here too if you wanted to if you wanted to get this area blocked in faster you can always do that too you can use a larger brush maybe we'll do that maybe we'll just get this brush good there we go we've got all the paint out of that brush for the most most part and we'll pick up this filbert brush we were using before and now we can pick up a lot more paint and just start getting that thick paint on now because remember before we said your first coat of paint is thin and now as we get to this part where we're finishing up and getting our final bits of um, paint on the canvas here we're going to use the thick paint so I'm going in here with thick paint And again, you can work right down into the green a little bit because we're going to go over that green again. That green first blocking in of all these greens was just to give us the, the general area of where our all of our gr greens were going to be. The greens and the yellows, the golds, the little bit of the browns and some blue mixed in there too, some cools. But essentially that's our just our block in to start with. And then now, as we're working in our final thicker paints going over top now. We don't have to worry about that. We can, we'll be going over that again. Okay, and then here we can simply grab some of these colors that we were using before. So I'm going to take some of that gold, even some of the green over here. We'll put some of that green take some of these greens here we're going to mix some green into this wall on the side of this portion of the house so we're just going to be repeating the colors a little bit of the reds here too so we just want to make that that white paint on the side of this house here interesting with different colors that we've used before to kind of just make it harmonize with the whole painting 
So we'll add a little bit of gold up there. A little more red over here. And I think that's looking good. And we'll continue. Now what we'll do is we'll go, let's take a break. Let's take a quick break now. I'm hoping you'll trust me on this, that when you're working in oils or even if you are coming from watercolors, now you're trying out some oil painting. It's kind of the same thing you'll hear me always say on my watercolor channel, that we're always taking a break every 20 minutes or so just to, and you might say, well, you know, Chris, I, I could work an hour or two and I don't need a break. That's fine. You can do that too. Everyone's different. I'm not saying everyone needs to do exactly what I'm saying, but I tend to think that most people can benefit from a break. You know, generally, you know, maybe every 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour, maybe even an hour. Maybe you're going to take a break once every hour. That's fine too. Um, so you're the artist. You're going to kind of figure out what your limit as to how much you're going to work before you start to feel a little more fatigued and you're not thinking maybe as critically and as accurately as, as you might if you were more fresh and after you've taken a little bit of a rest. Okay, so it's up to you. Let's come back. We're having a great fun time here. Look at this. We blocked in most of our thick overpainting now. We're doing our second coverage of our oil paint, our paint coat over the top of our first thinner uh, paint coats that we put on earlier in this painting. So now you're kind of seeing how everything is getting a little better, coming together a little more. Uh, but since I'm here looking at this, I I want to have a little more, that's very blue and cool over here, that's fine, but I'm just going to add a little warmth to that, over here, like that too. Okay, so we're moving along here, um, let's keep uh, going here. Stack up this rooftop up here. So again, I'm using that white. We used a lot of white. We took titanium white and we just squeezed out a whole bunch. And we're gonna get that rooftop up here. Paint it in. Something over here, I'm using a little more of a bit of lemony yellow and some of that orangey yellow. A little bit of green on this side. So. I'll try to get some of the cadmium uh, the yellow lemon and the red, and some of the just a little bit of the um, cadmium red with the. looking up here and trying to see what we have there. I'm going to show off my brush a little bit. I have either a tissue or a paper towel. Usually at all times I have a tissue or paper towel in my hand right there in front of the paint and water. And I'm going to just use a little bit of hard wash here. Or shadowy kind of color there. Paint in those black and cyan reds. And the yellow. A little bit of a thicker 
over here like this. You kind of turned it back this way again, so you kind of slimmed that line down. And that's simply you're just grabbing some of the wedge, a little bit of tension, grabbing the wedge. You pick up a little bit of the um, brown, a little bit of the blue maybe even too. You get that a little bit darker, and you just that's how you get a better angle on that. And that that's it right there. And you never see it bobbling over at this point.
feel it's going to end up in what you're doing later on. So when you're walking towards the mosque, always remember that you're always going to be thinking of that one more that's going over the top of everything else. So you can try to do things and take a little more uh, liberty uh, when you're painting because you know you're going to come back over the top again and cover over things. So you can always cover up and cover over things as you're going when you're painting. That's always one of the great things about you know, painting sand is you always create that tension like a palette knife where it covers everything with your brush and your paint to kind of, uh, you know, boost things up a little bit, or bring the light where you want to, add a dark where you want to, add a different little accent color where you want to, whatever you want to do, or you can give you the flexibility to do that. All right, so we've been going now. Uh, it's got to get another, we've been working another 15, 20 minutes, I guess. So let's take another break. I think after... Um, We've taken a break now. We'll, we'll take a break for 15 minutes again. So I can come up and we'll come back with Jack and the Star. I see Jack and the Star. And the last thing we'll do is the, the three details and the bushes and the uh, weeds and things in the foreground. And then after that, we'll just do something with the pink spots where we might want to add a little highlight of white or maybe an extra little green for shading some things. We'll have to figure that out later. But again, we're trying to have some fun with this. So let's get this started off now. Okay, well, we are back. I apologize for my audio. I think my uh, microphone battery went on the fritz, uh, ran out of juice, so I plugged in a new battery into my microphone, and uh, it's working fine now, so I apologize. that You probably lost volume a little bit there for a few uh, minutes, maybe for 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know how long it was, but I try to monitor these things as best I can, but sometimes it just uh, gets away from me. Apologize. So we're going to continue. We're going to kind of start finishing up here and wrapping up this painting. And feel free to take a little more time and care and caution and relax and have more fun. And I'm just going to try to, you know, wind up things now because I realize, you know, we could go on for another couple hours if we wanted to really go super slow and kind of, you know, um, kind of discuss and go over all the nuances of what we're doing here. But basically... Uh, I think you have the idea by now of how we kind of created this painting. We started off with those thinner coats of, of paint. And we let them get a little dry as we were going, uh, taking breaks. And now we're toward the end. We're actually putting in the final glazings of our paint. Um, we said we have pretty much everything blocked in except for the sky. So let's get the sky color. So we'll take a lot of white up here. And then we'll start working in some, I think cerulean blue would be good. How does that color look for you on camera? You can kind of see that's a nice light blue. Like this. So I'm just going to keep mixing that blue. And I think I'll put a touch of phthalo green in there. That might look good. I think that'll look really nice. A little bit of phthalo green. Let's try that. Oh, that looks great. So now you'll just see, I'm going to put the thick coats of paint right onto the sky wash here. And what we'll do is we'll get the first just large wash blocked in here, or, you know, large coating of our paint to start with. Then we can always add in a little bit of nuances of colors if we want to. That's what we're doing here. We're just getting in that. And you could tap in some colors here and there. Like so. Okay, we have plenty of white here. Let's keep, we'll mix a little more of that. Um, so we had cerulean blue and a little touch of phthalo green. And I hope you're going to have fun with this as you kind of wind down your painting too as we're working together. 
I'm hoping you paint together with me as we go. I, I do think that looks like a really good color for the sky, like a nice blue with a, just a hint of that phthalo green. Reminds me of a pair of sneakers I used to have when I was very young. A pair of Converse sneakers that were that like sky blue, powder blue kind of color. That's always a beautiful color, the blue, the powder blue kind of look. Okay, now that we have that powder blue in there, we will add a touch of it here and there. In our washes here below. Even on our rooftops here that we created the colors of but you just notice if you add these colors into your washes around the entire painting, you will see a, a harmony that happens with your colors. And that's, that's what we want. We want harmony in our colors with our, at least that. Always remember that. You want harmony with your colors when you're doing your paintings. You want to avoid like that blotchy, um, disharmonious color pattern in your painting where you might have painted for half your painting with a set bit of colors and then you say oh I have a good idea I'm gonna grab another two or three colors out of my um, box of paint tubes and you start putting other colors that's a real issue a problem that you have to avoid um, but I'm I you know when I first started painting I did the same thing too I wanted to add lots of beautiful colors in there and sometimes I would in the middle of my painting I would add new colors that I would have new tube paint colors into my watercolor paintings and then I realized after looking at them for a while um, so you're the artist, you're going to realize this, that if you can kind of stick to a color scheme that you start with, and then you just follow it all the way through to the end of your painting, you're going to have a much more pleasant looking, positive, pleasing looking painting that's going to really read well and look beautiful. Um, so I'm hoping you'll stick with me on this and trust me on that. Having 20 years of uh, painting experience in the art, this is one thing I can definitely guarantee you that you're going to have... A much better time at your watercolor or your oil painting or your watercolors or your acrylics whatever you're painting in you're gonna have much better success if you're harmonizing your colors and keep staying with a color scheme that you start with and following it all the way through to the end of your painting all right so we have a a really everything is coming together now let's change our water bucket because I have quite a bit of a murky looking water bucket I'll just show you what it kind of looks like right now See how white that is? We've been using a lot of white paint. So with mixing all that white paint and everything, and I'll be very careful, I shouldn't be doing this over the top of the painting. But in any case, you kind of see how that is. That's very murky, all that paint. Let's get some new water in our water bucket. I'm gonna have to run across the studio quick. Okay, some more fresh water in the water bucket. And incidentally, again, all my art supplies I have down in the bottom in the description of this video. You might have to click on the word more to um, see what I have down there because sometimes it's you don't always see all the links. But all the links are to Amazon. All of my art supplies that I have for oil painting, Amazon has them. And they get delivered quickly. You don't have to drive and waste gas driving your car and polluting their, uh, you know, causing pollution and like that's the, you know, that's the, the main thing is, you know, conservation is a great thing. Um, so when I order things, they come right to my house in a couple of days from Amazon. No worries. But I do like driving too. I have a, a, a nice uh, sports utility vehicle I like to drive around in. So now, since you see, we have all these colors out on our palette here, our wax paper palette paper by uh, 
that's Strathmore, Strathmore, and that's below too in the description box. The Strathmore palette paper, it's like a wax paper. So we have all our colors you can see here. Let's just leave this the way it is. We have still room to work with some more colors if we need to, but I think we're pretty much almost there. Let's um, start mixing up a little more of the brighter looking greens. So that's the cadmium lemon yellow, yellow ochre. I'm just looking here. Yellow ochre, a little bit of phthalo green. Okay, I'll put a little bit of that phthalo green there with a little bit of the um, cerulean blue. A little bit of the white in there too. Kind of tone that down a little bit. Okay, so I think that's looking good. Maybe a little bit of the yellow in there would look good to give us that like uh, olivey green. A little bit of brown so you have to kind of mix your colors and get them just right so that to me is it needs a little more burnt umber and a little more yellow ochre to give us that olivey green and I think we have it there olive green looks really good golden colors here we might need a little more um, cadmium yellow lemon Like that. Plenty of cadmium yellow we have there. It's kind of like an orangey yellow toward the warmer side, toward the red. And then now what we'll do is we'll just try to get ourselves. So I'm just going to take this filbert brush, load it up with colors, and then just sort of Kind of just make some leaf forms going upwards like this. I want to leave blue sky there though. Okay. Okay, a little bit of the darker green we leave under there. Then we pick up some more of this golden color. That's too much, no problem. A little bit here and there. If it's too dark, you know, not a problem. You could always uh, take your palette knife if you wanted to. And a little bit of some tissue or paper towel and you could scrape up a little bit of this here. Okay, you can scrape up a little bit with your palette knife if you need to once in a while on your painting. A little bit of that lemon yellow, cadmium lemon yellow. Maybe we want to have a little more lemony yellow there. Good, I think that's fine. Some of that lemony yellow just at the tops, maybe where the light is catching up top and it's your painting you you create the way you want things to look you can blend a little more if you don't like the spottier kind of look to it you can blend a little bit like this Ok, 
Okay, a couple little quick upstrokes just to give you that feeling of things are springing up toward the light. There we go. Okay, so we are in good shape here. Let's start getting some more colors down here below. I'm just going to do some, we call this scumbling in uh, oil painting. You're just going to do some twisting and turning of your brush here and there. Um, just twisting your brush around in different angles. Get some more greens in there. Get some more green paint, dark greens, golds. Again, it's your happy painting. You're going to put as much variations in your greens and things. But again, we're sticking with our color scheme here. We're not going to go straying off from, from what we d we've done so far. Okay, I'll put a little bit of this here. I'm going to have maybe a, some branches over here. So, and some uh, small. All right, so that's fine. I'm going to say that that we're in good shape with our greenery, with our bushes, trees, weeds. Now what we can do is we can take our finer brush. Here we have our finer, smaller brush. And we're going to go with some brown and blue. Now if I've run out of brown, my burnt umber, I grab my burnt umber tube of paint. We'll squeeze out a little more burnt umber. I don't want to go too thin, so I'm going to leave this pretty much straight paint. Maybe I'll add a touch of white to that. Make it a little lighter. And let's see if we can get a couple tree. Here I'm going to use a really light touch. I'm going to hold my brush about almost this is like normally this might be the size of a pencil this brush is not it's a little larger than a pencil let's say so you can kind of see how my brush is a little bit a little bit larger than a pencil but I want to hold it up high like this and this is how you get a loose kind of feel for your branches so you just take your brush and touch it down on your paper and do that so I'm making a little branch or two just like this Maybe I need to add a little bit of water to that. Let's see if I thin it down what happens. If I can get a little more of a thinner line. It doesn't seem to... Okay, so just a couple branches. Doesn't have to be much and what we'll do is we'll actually add some more here. Now what we'll do is um, we'll add just a little more as we call it the scumbling or we're just going to take our brush and uh, kind of get some paint on there some thicker paint so I'll take some of this with some white some green and let's just do a little okay that's it fine now one more thing we can do we can take a um, thicker paint and we'll use our square brush here so we're going to take brown and blue, mix that brown and blue together with a little bit of cadmium red. And then what we'll do is we're going to create some windows. Let's get a couple windows in here. Let's see how that works. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe even a door or two. I'm going to say let's put a door here.
That looks good. Yeah, I think that that's what that needed. That's a doorway going in there. And maybe we're going to, let's do a window over here. Let's do um, maybe a little blue in that. So we tone it down a touch. Maybe a touch of white, blue and white. Maybe that sky color. Let's see how that looks. We'll put a little gray in there. Maybe we'll do a window over here. That looks good. Maybe we'll do a window over here. And then we'll pick up some of these greens. Mix a little bit of the greens into the uh, black. That black, well, you know, it's almost black. It's, you know, it's the burnt umber and French ultramarine blue, which is really dark with some cadmium red. So we want to pick up some of the sky color. Just a few little bits of uh, detail there. So we have a couple windows. We'll put those in. You could put darker. A little bit darker up top. Okay, so you have darker th uh, there. Then let's do a few more details and we're finished. Um, I'm going to say that we need a little bit of a highlight. So I'm going to use gr uh, yellow ochre, cadmium lemon yellow, and a little bit of um, a little bit of cerulean blue. I'm just going to put a little, little bit of a shadow there, like that. A little bit of blue. So I rinse off the brush, dry off some of the paint off on a tissue. Take a little more of that cerulean blue, just to have a little shadow under there. Happy shadow under the eaves of the roof over here, like that. That looks good. Like that. And then the same over here too. I think we need some shadowing under here. Um, we'll take some of the greens. So we're going to repeat the colors again. That will actually help us a lot if we can repeat the same colors that we've been using. Rinse off the brush, dry off the brush. Maybe we need a little darker bit over here. Like that. So now I'm just looking back and forth at my reference photo to try to just fill in the little bits of details that I may have left out and that's the fun about oil painting is you you'll have a lot of fun with it you start out um, just blocking in your major areas like we did and then and then at the very end of the painting then that's when you go in and you just do these little final touches like we're doing right now So you see I added some shadows under this eave of this roof. I added shadows under this eave of that, this roof here. Like 
like that. You can add some of your own little bits of brush strokes and things like that. We have um, plenty of Could add some more just a touch of detail if you wanted to down here at the very very bottom just a couple little indications of some things you could do some scrapes with your um, palette knife if you want to just add a couple little bits of scrapes for some weeds but I think we have a really very very pleasant looking oil painting right now of a beautiful country scene a barn we have a barn some houses uh, maybe it's the it's a farm I'm thinking it's a farm with a barn and a couple sheds and a house um, let's do a little more touch to the um, the chimney over here too I wanted to add just a little bit of highlight to that to the chimney just on the top um, then we'll add some of that green to the sides so we can kind of Then maybe we can add a little bit of orange, red and orange, for a clay pot for the top of the chimney. Maybe a clay color with a little bit of the brown. Too much uh, gray there. Let's see if we can get a clay kind of color. One more red. A little more yellow, more yellow, yellow orange, cadmium orange actually. And I'll rinse off my brush. Sometimes it doesn't always work that great, but no problem. And let's pick up some white. If I run out of white again, just as we finish up here with a few highlights, squeeze out a little bit of white up top there. I'll pick up a little bit of that white. I think that'll. That'll give us that clay color, I think. So this is where I might use my my paintbrush here and rest my hand on top so I don't lean into the paint. And I'll roll my brush around and try to get a good point on there as much as I can. And we'll just put a little clay top to our chimney like that. Okay. And... Uh, Maybe one more bit of detail to that. Maybe a little bit of this here. That looks pretty good. Okay, we can sort of at some point we... Same thing here, I'll put my, my paintbrush here. And I'll just maybe give a little bit of a highlight on top of that, like so. And then maybe we'll have a farmer here. Maybe we'll do a figure. Why not? Let's do a farmer. Maybe we'll have on a red shirt. A little bit of blue in the red shirt. Maybe a little bluish purple shirt. Maybe he's over here. Okay, he's behind the trees over there and bushes. 
And maybe he's got some darker hair. So we'll put his that there. We'll put a little bit of highlights on his on the figure here. So we're doing a figure. So we'll just put some blue jeans on there. Maybe we'll go back in and get a little bit of green and just so he's he's sort of behind the trees a little bit and things. And then as we finish up here, again he's carrying something here, so we're gonna have a little. Something there, just something interesting, a figure in this painting. That's always exciting to have a figure in our paintings. And again, you could add just a couple bits of... Uh, color a little bit of like um, color accents here and there this is darker though this is going to stay dark there and okay that's it let's not fuss around too much that's usually when we have problems so if we just kind of stick to this Maybe we could, yes, we could add uh, maybe one more detail or two, but I would say I'm going to do maybe one more detail. I might do a, uh, maybe a vent, a roof vent up here. Let's see if I could do a roof vent up here, just up here. Just some... like this like that and then I'll blend it out a little bit with a little bit of damp brush and I can even blot a little bit with a tissue or even just with my finger kind of blend it just to give it a little to show that there's a vent up top here in this peak of this roof over here. And that's it. Okay, so thanks so much for joining along with me. This was, you know, a painting we took our time with. We didn't, um, basically, we made sure we... We, we got some details in here, here and there. But we didn't go too much overboard with too many details. And we got the begin, the, in the beginning we blocked everything in, as you recall. We blocked in our major thin, thin glazings of oil paint on the beginning of the video. And then we worked on top of our thinner glazes with thicker paint to be able to get this result at the end of the painting where we were adding on thicker bits of paint here and there as we went through with our trees, some of the paints on our buildings here, our farmhouse, our um, the barn, and all these different uh, parts of our components of our painting, of our subject matter. And of course in the final 
bit of our painting here we did a little we added in a figure that looks just fantastic it really brings a beautiful um, extra dynamic to the painting uh, having a figure um, in and about the our farm scene here farmhouse scene here and barns okay so we'll see on the next uh, oil painting again thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't subscribed um, again if you subscribe there's nothing more than YouTube will alert you the next time we've created a new video so that you don't miss anything I want you to make sure you stick with us here for your oil painting and um, also too if you're interested in uh, watercolor painting I'm suggesting everyone will, will work with oils and watercolors as much as you can if you can use or if you can create uh, artwork in both mediums I think you're really going to benefit from that so I'm hoping you will do that but in any case if you're here for just oil painting great if you also would like to learn a little bit about watercolor painting of course you can come over to my other channel you just type in Chris Petrie watercolor in the YouTube search and you'll find me there too okay we'll see you on the next video bye bye